Hello, good morning everyone, Richard Wong here, welcome back to the channel. The lens we are looking at today is a super tiny lens. It is the Brighting Star 28mm f2.8. This lens has some pretty serious flaws, and it is a lens that may not really make sense to some people. But if you love compact lenses like me, then it is a lens that is just very hard to resist even though it's far from a perfect lens. And the usual disclaimer before we start, the lens was sent to me by Brighting Star, but it is a completely independent review just like all the other reviews on this channel. Pretty much every single lens review on this channel would have the design and build quality session. I think it is very important and that's why I usually put it at the beginning of my reviews. But at the same time, this is also the most boring session as a lot of lenses, the construction and design are just very similar. So I feel like a lot of times I'm just repeating something that I already said hundreds of times before. This Brighting Star lens though is quite different. And in my opinion, this is the most interesting part of this review because the reason why I myself would choose a lens like this is really about its design, about its super compact size. But there is more than that. This lens was designed for Leica M mount, but you can fit it onto pretty much any mirrorless cameras by just using a very simple adapter. If we measure the part of the lens that extrudes to the front of the mount, it's only one centimeter, so it's ridiculously thin. A lot of people would call this one a pancake lens, but for me, I would rather call it a body cap lens because once you mount this lens onto the camera, the thickness is pretty much the same as a camera body cap. But no matter you call it a pancake lens or a body cap lens, it's just super tiny. But even though it is tiny, the weight is 125 gram. By no means I would call it a heavy lens, but for such a tiny lens, it feels a lot heavier than I thought it would be. The main reason is that this lens is made of brass, so that's why you can feel the weight of this lens when you pick it up despite its very small size. It's quite hard to show you in the video, but this lens feels very solid and it has that old school premium feeling which is missing from pretty much all the lenses in the market these days unless you are buying a Leica lens or some really special lens. The body of this lens is covered by black lacquer paint, so if you keep using this lens, you will eventually have brassing and then you can see the brass that is underneath the paint which is one reason why people love the old camera equipment because it just looks beautiful once you start to want it out a little bit. For a lot of people, the brass construction and the tiny size is already a very good reason or excuse for them to buy this lens. But there's more. Even though it is such a tiny lens, the lens optical formula consists of six elements in five groups. It has a fast f2.8 maximum aperture. The lens has rangefinder coupling as well, so if you use it on Leica M camera, you can focus correctly using the rangefinder. However, there's a bit of caveat I will talk about a bit later on when using the rangefinder for focusing. If you're using this lens on a mirrorless camera with an adapter, then the rangefinder coupling isn't useful as you'll be focusing using the camera's live view feature. Just like a lot of Leica M lenses, this lens has a focus tab for manual focus and the focus flow is around 70 to 80 degrees. So it's not really long, but I found it quite easy and also very satisfying to focus as the focus ring is so smooth. Adjusting the aperture on the other hand is a bit more tricky. You have to push your finger onto the little ring on the front of the lens, then rotate it to change the aperture value. The aperture ring does not have clicks, so you really have to look at the front of the lens when you are changing the aperture value. I'm not too sure why the aperture ring doesn't have clicks, as I thought it would improve the user experience and I don't think many people would use this lens for video. But anyway, while changing the aperture is not easy, 
There is just something magical when I look at the aperture open and close as I change the value. It's just really quite beautiful. The lens doesn't come with any lens hood as you would expect for a body cap lens, but it comes with a small metal lens cap that is also made of brass with the black paint on it. You install the lens cap by screwing it onto the front of the lens. Since the lens cap is quite small, I myself usually just don't use it as I feel I may drop and lose it very easily. Brighting Star has also created a 25.5mm UV filter, especially for this lens. That filter's metal frame is also made of brass with the same black paint, so it fits and looks perfectly when mounted on this lens. One thing I want to point out is, this special UV filter doesn't have a front filter thread, so you cannot use this filter with the lens cap at the same time. For myself, I would prefer to use this filter and leave it pretty much permanently on the lens because the lens still looks great, it is very slim and I don't have to worry about I may just lose or drop the lens cap when shooting on the street. Okay, now let's have a look at the image sharpness. If we zoom in to the center of the lens, at f2.8, the sharpness is not bad, it's reasonably sharp and I don't see any chromatic aberration. However, when I stop down the lens to f4, the center actually becomes softer. And it's the same when I stop down further to f5.6. Only when I stop down to f11, then the center is slightly sharper than when it was at f2.8. I was quite puzzled when I did my first set of sharpness tests until I figured out it is caused by focus shift when we stop down the lens. Look at these comparison photos. Both are center 200% zoom shot at f4. The left photo was shot by focus at f2.8 using live view, then stopped down to f4. And the right side photo, I stopped down to f4 first, then focus using live view. You can see the right side photo is much sharper. This is the same if we compare the f5.6 photos. The photo that I stopped down first, then focus, is much sharper. Actually really sharp compared to the other photo that I focus first, then stop down. As I stop down further, the difference becomes smaller, but you can still see the difference until I stop down to f16. So it is a problem for user shooting with a Leica camera and rely on the rangefinder to focus as once you stop down the lens, you will need to adjust the focus slightly and you can't really tell how much you should adjust unless you switch to using live view. For people shooting with mirrorless cameras, then this is not so much a problem for you as long as you stop down the lens first then focus, then you can get the correct focus. Now, if you look at the corner of the photo where there is a parking sign, so that is roughly the same distance away from me as the house that is at the center of the photo. At f2.8, the corner is very soft. I can't even see what is written on that parking sign at the corner. Even when I stop down the lens, the corner sharpness is still, well, not there at all. I have to stop down all the way to f16, then I can barely see what is written on that parking sign. And the reason is that there is some field curvature near the edge of the frame. I mean some pretty massive field curvature. I also noticed that when I was shooting some photos on the street. Look at this photo. I shot this photo at f2.8 and the focus was at the pizza sign that is just about a meter or so in front of me because it was shot at f2.8, the depth of field is not very deep. You can see the building behind the pizza restaurant is already blurred quite a bit. However, if you look at the left side of the photo, that green tree on the left, it is much further away, but yet it is sharper than the building that is much closer, and it is because of the field curvature. This creates some pretty strange looking photo, especially when shooting at f2.8, where the background at the edge that is supposed to be blurry, but actually much sharper than it should be. Now let's get back to the corner sharpness test photos. If I refocus the photo at the corner after I stop down the lens, now the corner sharpness is much better. It is still a bit soft at f2.8, 
but it gets sharper as I stop down the lens. At f8, the corner is pretty sharp. However, the problem is that now the center of the photo is out of focus. We'll look at the close focus performance of this lens now. The minimum focus distance of this 28mm lens is 0.7m, which is not that close at all. This is probably because it is a Leica M mount lens, so it has the same minimum focus distance restriction. So the maximum magnification is not that high as you can see in this photo that are shot at f2.8 at minimum focus distance. Sharpness at f2.8 at minimum focus distance is okay and it does improve as you stop down the lens. However, because of the focus shift, you need to stop down the lens first, then use live view to adjust the focus. Otherwise, your photo may become softer as you stop down the lens. While it is a body cap lens, because of its reasonably fast f2.8 maximum aperture, you can still create a bit of foreground background separation and blur the background when your subject is at close distance. Bokeh from this Burton Star lens has a bit of highlight at the edge of the bokeh and the bokeh balls near the edge or corner of the frames are not perfect circle. If you like perfectly run smooth bokeh, then this lens is not for you. But if you are happy with bokeh that has a bit of character, then you may like the bokeh from this 28mm f2.8 lens. At f2.8, there is some really strong vignetting near the edge of the frame. It is one of the strongest vignetting that I have seen recently. Given that it is a super compact, super slim lens, I'm not surprised by that at all. Pretty much expected to be honest. I would be more surprised if I see minimal vignetting. Stopping down to f4, vignetting becomes quite a bit better. At f5.6, there's still a little amount of vignetting, but it's really quite minor. Vignetting remains the same even if you stop down the lens further. In terms of chromatic aberration, this Brighting Star lens is very good. I don't really see much chromatic aberration at all in all my photos. Even some photos, I thought there must be some ugly color fringing. But when I zoom in the photo and check, there's almost no chromatic aberration at all. That is pretty impressive. I want to talk about distortion now. This lens definitely has quite a bit of barrel distortion, as you can see in this photo. You can also see the distortion in my usual brick wall test photo. If I go to Adobe Lightroom and apply a plus 8 distortion correction, and that can get rid of most of the distortion. Next, the lens flare performance. To be honest, this is the area that I was most worried about. Because of the very compact size, there's not even a lens hood, I was worried there may be some massive lens flare issue like a lot of Chinese lenses. So there is a bit of lens flare. Sometimes I see some bright red lens flare or some ghosting, but the amount is acceptable. Contrast also remains quite decent even when I shoot directly into the sun or have the sun in front but just outside the frame. So the lens flare performance is actually not bad, much better than I expected and I can even use the lens flare to add a bit of character to my photos. Let's have a look at the sun stars now. From f2.8 to f5.6, this lens has almost no sun stars at all. At f8, we're starting to get some sort of sun stars, but it looks pretty messy in my opinion. And even if we stop down the lens further, the sun stars still don't look very nice to me. So this is not really a lens that I would recommend if nice and clean sun stars is super important to you. With this Brighting Star 28mm lens, I think it is a lens that is more designed for photographer rather than videographer, but some of you guys have specially asked me to shoot some video using this lens and share with you the video samples. So here are some of the video clips that I shot using this lens. 
The reason why I think this lens is more designed for photographer is because of the very compact size of this lens, which makes it harder to do very precise, smooth control of the focus and aperture value, especially the aperture. And I also noticed this lens has quite a bit of focus briefing. So if you look at this video clip that I changed the focus from close to far distance, then you will notice there is quite a bit of focus briefing. The amount of focus briefing is more than typical 28mm lens. One thing that I have mentioned many times on this channel is, lens design is always about trade-off, compromises, compromises between price, image quality, size, weight, build quality, and some of the specs like maximum aperture. So for a lens like this Brighting Star 28mm f2.8, I'm not an optical engineer myself, but I know it must be a huge challenge to keep the image quality good enough, but also make the lens so compact. It's just not realistic to expect a lens that can deliver perfect image quality, but with a body cap size. And I think people looking at buying a lens like this are not really looking for perfect image quality. So is the image quality good enough? For a lens that only extrudes one centimeter from the camera body, I'm pretty happy with most of the image quality test results. The only thing that I wish can be improved is the massive field curvature and the focus shift when you stop down the lens. It's not as big a problem for mirrorless camera users as they can preview the result using live view and make adjustment to the focus to compensate these issues. But if you are a Leica M rangefinder camera user and rely on the rangefinder only for focusing, then this will be a real problem and challenge as the rangefinder wouldn't give you any visual clues to help you correct any of these issues. Apart from that, there's nothing else that I will really complain about this lens. It's just such a beautiful lens and it's such a joy to shoot photos with this lens. The brass construction gives you that special feeling the normal lenses can't give you. And I can't wait until the black paint starts to wear out a bit and the brassing will make this lens look even more beautiful and give it more character.